Welcome back. <clears throat> Tonight we're doing a uh, uh, what, what's called a, a Vista pick. It a, it's a Cat X Vista with uh, an all-in-one board on uh, what's basically a toothpick frame. Uh, this is the FPV Cycle uh, Baby Tooth uh, three millimeter version. Um, the two millimeter version works. Uh, I just I like the three millimeter one. It's just a little hardier. Um, Along with that, I'm going to be running some FPV cycle 1303s. These are 5,000 kV. Um, and uh, with this motor uh, and uh, combo, you can get about six minutes of flight time out of like, you know, uh, like a 520 milliamp hour 3S or like a 300 milliamp hour 4S. Uh, so really a, a very good uh, just general purpose toothpick. Um, it's a little bit top heavy because uh, it's got that Cadex Vista on top, but if you balance it out with a nice uh, a sort of heavier uh, battery on the bottom, you can really get some nice performance out of it. And it's uh, fun to, to really, you know, get in and out of trees and things like that. So um, that's what we're going to build. And uh, first step we got to do is get our flight controller prepped. So I'm using the uh, GHF 411 AIO, which is from um, like J H E M C U or something like that. Uh, anyway, um, the uh, um, it, it's a relatively uh, small main. Yeah, here it is. Uh, J H E M C U GHF 411 2 to 4 S F4 AIO toothpick whoop, um, which is a mouthful and a half, but. Um, it, from uh, everything I've read online, it's actually a, a very good board uh, for a toothpick. So uh, I figured I'd give this one a try. Uh, a try. I've uh, played around with other toothpick boards. The Beta FPV uh, has one, uh, and I actually have it right here. Um, this is their uh, 2 to 4S AIO brushless toothpick F4 flight controller. And uh, you gotta pay very close attention to them because this one here is version three, I believe. If, uh, if I'm to, yep, uh, version three. If you get the version two board, you gotta use soft cereal to make your Vista work. Um, version three, they added a, a couple more pads and made it just a, a, a lot nicer. Um, wow, that is not, that is a cold solder joint right there. Anyway, I'll have to fix that when I do this one. But um, yeah, just uh, either one of these two flight controllers will work for this application. Uh, the version two will work for this application as well. You just got to do a little extra work is all. And um, that's, uh, you know, just the downside of having to use an LED pad as a uh, for soft cereal because they... Uh, didn't see the need to put two UARTs, two full UARTs on the thing. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get our bits out. We're going to set these guys aside. We should probably get our power lead done up first. Um, I'm going to mount this exactly like this. This direction is forward. Um, we're going to put our uh, wire back here. We're going to give it enough to get the job done. So maybe about maybe about half. Oh, let's get the tools out. Yeah. Or three quarters, I should say. And clean these guys off. And we'll tin up our connector. Yeah, I haven't done a build like this on camera for a little while, so bear with me. Uh, get back in the swing of things. <clears throat> I started out woefully unprepared. Didn't add any water to my sponge. Alright. Now I'm ready to go. Uh, 
That is the negative. There's one. And the positive. Two. All right. We'll put the shrink wrap on now. Yeah, this I, I really just like the, the form factor of this Vista pick. It um, handles very well for its size, you know, uh, among the three inch class. It, uh, among the three inch class of quads, um, this is really one of the first ones I found that, you know, seems to just strip it all out to bare bones necessity to get you in the air um, you know like I've built a lot of others like the DC2 the um, uh, the Acrobrat uh, a few others um, but this was the the first one uh, I'm sorry, the DC-3, the DC-2, I built both of those and the Acrobat and Brat and it, it, they, they were all much too heavy uh, you know, you, you just don't want all that weight. It, it's really cumbersome um, trying to get a, a, a quad to do what you want with that extra weight and, you know, the Vista. And surprisingly, going down in weight, uh, like this, this thing will come out approximately 90 grams all up. Uh, or I'm sorry 90 grams dry um, depending on what battery you run on it it's going to vary uh, significantly from there but um, you can get it down to about 125 grams and uh, that's a, a pretty decent number right there 125 grams versus something like you know 320 for a um, uh, you know some 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 of the other three inch uh, uh, options out there they're just they're too they're just too heavy in my opinion and they they just don't fly um in theory they have good power to weight but when you actually look at the numbers uh, the this little guy here seems to have a much better power to weight distribution than you know some of the larger quads you know some of the like you know 1407 based um quads uh, come on yeah it's not gonna fly is it let's get the positive side in at least Oops. good and take that one off. All That should do it right there. All right, looking good. So, the uh, next thing we need to do is we need to orient this so that we can identify our pads. Uh, they're labeled, but uh, I'm blind. I mean, I my my eyesight is shot. So, um, I'm gonna look at the online diagram. Because um, these little tiny uh, silk screens are, are very hard to read. Um, yeah, so um, I've got this lined up. We have a, a ground pad, a 5-volt pad, which you don't need, a video out pad, which we won't need, 
uh, TX1 and RX1. So these top two we're going to need, um, and we're going to use that for our, uh, uh, our MSP connection. And that's the connection that basically gives you the OSD in the, um, uh, the goggles. So um, then there's the S-Bus connection, and we'll go ahead and use the S-Bus pad for that. And that is up on this side. So we've got a ground pad, and we're going to need a ground pad, actually. Because um, whenever you run S-Bus or anything else, really, you should ground to uh, the signal ground. Um, and then there's a 4.5 volt, a 3.3 volt, and then an S-Bus line right here. And that should be all we need to do for getting this guy up in the air. Uh, besides uh, connecting two wires down here for our um, positive and negative to our, our um, uh, Vista when we pull that guy out. Now we should go ahead and do up our motors. Uh, so we'll go ahead and tin these guys. Boy, that did not go according to plan there. There we go. Come on. I want to stick to my board tonight. Here we go. Yeah, if you ever find that solder just doesn't want to go, just hold it on there just a little bit longer than you think you should, and usually that'll do it for you. Slow it down. Make happy little solder blobs. Right on your flight controller. Alright. There we go. Should be all set with that. We're going to go ahead and get our gummies in. So I have uh, an option of two canopies here um, and I think I've got this green one and I've got this blue one and honestly since I'm building this for someone else I think I'm going to use the canopy that turned out better for whatever reason both of these got a little bit of like I can't even explain it just something in the something in the print just didn't like that one little section on both of these so Something in the G-code or hell, I don't know. Whatever it is, the blue one I think turned out better. So we'll use that one. And the way this goes together, basically, is you set it on the little blue base. And then you mount your camera and everything in the... Into the, uh, the canopy. The camera and the air unit into the canopy and then get it all together yeah so it goes on pretty much like that and then this guy will sit over top of it and that'll That'll be that. Time for the Vista. Get it out. Get it tinned up. Uh, cheers. Yeah, it's actually a pretty quick build, all things considered. Make sure we're still recording. Good. Um, yeah, I, I think that the first one took me 
Oh, half an hour to do, give or take. Or 45 minutes, I should say. And hopefully this one won't take quite that long, but you never know. Oh, was this a 12 millimeter? Or 12 centimeter? It was. I got the nice long cable on this guy. That's a shame. Yeah, that's been the uh, that's been the long one. Normally, it the the long or the short, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just more wire you got to stuff up in there, and um, if you can avoid the longer cable, definitely do, because uh, it gets in the it gets to be a pain sometimes. I wonder if I should replace it. That's alright. And uh, double check your orientation. So on these Vista, the Vistas in particular anyway, uh, the um, quality control sticker is on top. And that's a good way to orient yourself. On the full size air units it's usually on the bottom. And there's a very faint in the plastic here. I'm not sure you can see it. There's an arrow pointed up this way, meaning this is the top. So it doesn't really matter which way you put it in because you can change it in the the uh, goggles. But uh, um, you can avoid a step and get it right the first time. Might as well. Yeah, this uh, canopy is called the Vista Pick Canopy, and there's a something uh, something called uh, the Guitar Pick. Uh, you can probably find it if you Google Guitar Pick Drone um, or Vista Pick Drone. Uh, they they invented this canopy and um, kind of posted it to Thingiverse so that everyone could make vista picks with their stuff and they use different frames I um, there's a number of options for frames uh, just about any toothpick will really work um, depending on what you're willing to accept in terms of weight so if you wanted a five millimeter version of this guy you could absolutely do up a five millimeter version of it and not have any ill effects from it really all right, time to get our Vista tinned here. All right, we've got our power and ground, our RX, our TX, our S bus, and our signal ground, or signal ground, whatever. And we'll go ahead and attach these wires. No reason not to use these. Other than the fact that there's two yellows on it. Thanks, Vista. Or should I say thanks, Cadex? Alright. One, mm -hmm. two, yep. all right, we need to remember that yellow is, should come from our TX pad, and that white should go to our RX pad. And that this little guy right here goes to ground. 
signal ground anyway. And really the only reason you need a signal, well, okay, so let's talk about signal ground for a second. Um, it's possible to power this thing without connecting it at all to your flight controller, right? So the way that, uh, if you just imagine, you powered this from an external battery. Not, not the battery you're powering your flight controller from. Well, you wouldn't have a ground reference plane for, or ground reference, I should say. You wouldn't have a ground reference for your um, uh, TX and RX lines in that scenario. Because your ground here on the uh, Vista and the ground on the ESC would actually be different. And uh, that creates a problem for knowing when uh, certain lines go hot and when they don't. So basically, when a line turns on and off, the, the uh, Vista basically treats that as data. And uh, without a ground attached to uh, both of them, they can't figure out what that signal means. There's, it just looks like noise. So um, that's why there's a, a common ground between all your components, generally. And that's what this black wire, this other black wire is. So just... Keep that in mind, and uh, I'll just clip off this end, and we'll stuff this guy. Uh, actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and get our Vista situated, or antenna situated, I should say, and then we'll run it up and in to okay run it out like that I think that seems the logical way to me anyway it's a little fiddly to get this in so just take your time try not to pinch any cable don't fight it Try to run the cable all down. Um, all right. Yeah. Let's go ahead and undo. Nice thing about TPU is that it stretches. Alright. Just kind of work your way around to get it situated in the into position.
work it around nice and slow until you got it where you want it. It's the only way to do it. Alright, now we're going to take our tweezers and attach our antenna. Should have it. Secure it. That ought to be pretty good. And then from the top here, you can just get your driver try not to stab yourself all right so uh, next steps here um, the way I have done this in the past anyway is to uh, go ahead and sit this on the board or on the um, the frame anyway and then we'll get it closer to being done. All right. So uh, next steps here are to go ahead and mount our flight controller. So I'm going to call this direction here forward, right here, and we're just going to set it down gently. So, and then there are a couple of these guys that are just a little bit too long. So, I like to just check to see uh, about how long it's going to be and then how much space we've got into this guy and it's just a little bit more than we need um, so these smaller ones are probably going to be perfect um, Try these. Let's see if we can get get them to thread into some uh, TPU mounts or TP or not TPU <laughs> nylon nuts. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of lifting up the corner and I'm stuffing a uh, a little nut into that corner in the hopes that when I run the the, uh, the bolt up through it, it'll actually catch it. Yeah, there we go. And I do this to all four corners. And this becomes uh, just the mounting of this top canopy to the base. Now, if you have metal nuts, you can absolutely use those, but uh, I don't think that you have enough room for nylocks. Um, so I've got a, a couple of nylocks here, but it's, it's already very snug. And um, 
you could probably modify this TPU mount so that you didn't need to do it this way. But this is how I did my last one, so I'm inclined to do it the same way this time. And you can tell me in the comments uh, what exactly I did wrong. And uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty to talk about. There's that one. And finally. Oh, come on, get in there, you piece of shit. Yep, so all I've done is I've stuffed a, basically a, a nylon nut into each one of these corners, and then I'm going to run the M2 hardware up into that. Now, it might not be the worst thing in the world. Good four or five millimeters different. Yeah, we're gonna use the longer ones. Let's see if I can find some matching ones from my kit. Good to go. Always good to have spares. All right. We said that this was forward. Yep, we got everything back in the right position. We're going to thread this guy up through here. And if you wanted to run a battery strap, now would be the time to think about it um, before you go putting your hardware all together for the what's going to probably be close to the last time. Uh, we got to do a bit of soldering before we call it done, but we got to get this, this flight controller on top of this board before we do the last little bit of it. And uh, Yeah, so uh, what I recommend uh, rather than a um, rather than doing a a, uh, a strap just run some uh, uh, silicon elastic bands rubber bands basically to hold it on there uh, that's worked well for me uh, I run uh, two of them in opposite directions and it kind of sandwiches the, um, the the pack and holds it in place and those those silicon based straps are just impossible to tear. I think I've I don't think I've ever broken one. Uh, come to think of it. I said this was forward, so we'll go ahead and try and set this guy.
There we go. That's got it. Sometimes a little brute force is all you need. forward so we're going to um, have to connect these guys and our motors so let's do our motors first luckily it gives you plenty of screw options so just a ton um, the shortest of these, uh, of which they give you four of, is too short, and then you have four sort of medium ones, and then two uh, what I'd call prop screws here. And the medium ones are just perfect for coming up through this three millimeter frame. And you've got spares. And the nice thing about the frame, or the nice thing I found about the frame, is that it's very, very snug. So everything is nice and tight. You don't have to worry too much about things backing off or, you know, lock tighten. I, I am not a fan of that stuff. I, uh, I much prefer, you know, it was a talk about peace of mind, but I have seen only one screw ever come out. And uh, that was <laughs> on a really, really itty bitty motor, too. Um, Like an 0802 <laughs> had a motor screw back out. But it didn't go anywhere. And provided you check your equipment before you connect the battery, it's always a good idea to do so. You shouldn't have any issues. Oh, come on now. How in the hell did I manage that? You know, I, I swear, it only ever happens on film. You know, if you're trying to do something right for your audience, of course you're going to orient the stupid motor in the wrong direction. There we go. Tiny little motors, tiny little screws. Sometimes they just fight you.
Just take it and bend that little tab flat. I, uh, I really like these FPV cycles. They are very, very efficient for their specs. Um, don't expect, like, you know, them to fly like a 5 inch or anything. It's, they're not that powerful, um, obviously, but they are well suited to this particular rig. There we go. And you got to pay attention to your prop choice too because these actually have the two millimeter shaft in the middle. So just keep all these things in mind when you're considering if you're going to do this build or not. The two millimeter shaft is a little bit odd. The normal standard is one and a half millimeter, but the two millimeter is actually a whole lot nicer because it lets you run three inch props um, with just a, on a T-mount. Um, and it, they, you know, the, you keep your weight down you know, because you're uh, normally a three inch prop is on a five millimeter shaft, um, and here you're running a three inch prop on these uh, this much smaller motor. And so, of course, it's a lower pitch, but yeah, I'm running 30, oh god, 30 16s, I think, um, tri blades, and there's 30 18 bi blades. And uh, they just work, both of them work pretty well. And my testing that I've done has all been on tri blades. And it's just crazy to think that this little guy can give you an HD picture for six minutes. Which is pretty good. I mean, my long range rig, my seven inch uh, Dead Cat 1 will go 15 minutes, and believe me, it gets exhausting to fly that thing. But I can charge up half a dozen packs and go fly for an hour. I mean, you know, get out there, you're running five and six minute packs. So in that respect, it's a lot like a 5 inch, you know. You want to go out and have a good time, fly around for an hour or two, charge up your 3 and 4S micro batteries, get out there and have a good time. Yep. And hopefully, with any luck, you'll see this one on someone else's channel. Hopefully. To be determined. We will see. But, uh, yeah, I'm building this for someone else. Because they thought it looked interesting. All right, so bring it over, come up. All right. A couple of these. Yeah. 
And I, I use the DJI controller with all my DJI gear. I just, um, you know, I, I've tried Crossfire on my DJI's and I found that there's uh, a disconnect for me. Um, uh, what I, I'd call sync lag. <laughs> so the things my quad is doing, I'm seeing the reaction of my inputs. And so if I do a roll or something like that, then I'm watching it happen in the goggle and I am not seeing the true representation of my stick inputs. And so I overshoot a lot and have to make a whole lot more corrections than I do when I run with the DJI unit. And I, I don't know technically what it is, and I'm sure that I could adapt to Crossfire, but I also kind of don't need Crossfire. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with how the DJI unit works. Pretty happy with how the, you know, OSD works. The only thing I'm missing really would be telemetry, but I, I don't, I mean, you don't need a telemetry on a micro. You don't need a telemetry on a 5-inch acro. You, you just need, you need that on a long range, and you run different stuff on long range. Unless you're running a DJI long range, in which case I do run crossfire on that and, but that's also a different type of rig you know it's not it's not meant for flippy flops and you know twisties or tight spaces it's meant to go slow for a long time I don't normally do it this way. I don't normally put wires on like this and then tighten them down first. But on this particular quad, I'm doing it this way mostly to keep them nice and straight and organized and then bring them up onto this and keep them out of the props because that's actually a big concern because this thing is so, I mean, there's just not a lot of space on this thing. And in fact, the I can already tell that the, um, from experience more than anything, that I'm going to need to pin down the uh, antenna line as well. Um, just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. All right. Let's go ahead. Two, three, here. Tune up these wires. Come on. Good.
one down. Maybe do this in shot. Mm -hmm. Without my head in the way. Yeah, like I said, it's been a little while since I've done a build video. One done. Next one I'll leave it just a hair longer. <laughs> just a hair. Cheers. Three. That was a whole lot easier. Uh, two or three extra millimeters makes all the difference. Yeah, you don't want that to fray out. Just keep them nice and tidy. Best you can. And then grab them with the tweezers. Just work down the line. Ooh. And that one is super long. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got about four or five millimeters of wire. We just don't need that much wire. Especially not on one little itty bitty pad. Alright. One. Now 
These are Tamiya, Tamaya tweezers. And I like them okay. But uh, I wish that they were a little grippier. I uh, wish they were more like eyebrow plucking tweezers. They have serrations on them. There we go. All right, last but not least, get these done. And then we'll do the last little bit of wiring. Let's take off. I think we're pretty good. Yeah. Looking good. All right. Our direction is forward. And we want to figure out our power and ground first. So we need to be able to reach back and under just slightly. Trim these right about there. Trim these guys. dab on top of these.
We'll just connect the other one to the top side ground. Keep it simple. Okay. Now, yellow needs to go to our So, uh, forward, we want the, yep, that's where the battery is connected, that's the ground, this TX1 and RX1, uh, it's TX and then RX, good. And then what we'll do, yep, yeah, that's going to work right there, and then we want the, first of the yellow wire to go to the RX So the white one is our RX line. It goes on first to our TX pad. Wait, is that right? Yellow connects to TX on the yellow connects to TX. The white one connects to the RX pad there and okay good now for the other the last two, we need them to come across a little bit and connect, so we'll call that good. And we've got an S bus and a ground, signal ground I should say. Trying not to roast my TPU here. Okay, now.
yellow wire to S bus. And there is our finished quad. So what we're going to do now is just double check all of our connections. That's good. We'll go ahead and attach Actually, what we're going to do is unscrew going to unscrew these all the way until the TPU sits flat and then we'll re-thread them back in. Let's just double check our length. Yeah, it should be pretty darn close, I think. Yeah, we'll run it right down in there.
So these things are pretty amazing. This little stretchy elastic and uh, it's uh, made of silicon from what I understand. So it's pretty much pretty, I mean I can stretch the hell out of the things and without them breaking. So I, uh, I like to use these for holding the um, holding the battery in place. Oh, come on. Sandwich it in between there. Boom. Holds it pretty darn well. All right. Next. We'll get this one threaded in. Then we'll do a smoke stopper test. And then we should be done. How are we looking on time? Oh, an hour and 20 minutes, all right, not the end of the world. I mean, God. Just about finished. Coming down to it. Oh, come on. Sometimes TPU just does not like to thread.
there it is. All right, next step, we're going to test, make sure we don't have any shorts. Easiest way to do that is by just turning your meter to continuity and making sure that it actually does check continuity and then getting in to the positive and negative. And if you hear it light up, that means that there's something wrong with your quad. Now, I, I kind of touched down in there too far, but as you can see on the, the meter, yep, there's definitely no issue with that. So, next step, smoke stopper test. And the smoke stopper is right here. Plug in the smoke stopper. We should hear the good noises. Yep, looks good. Vista light is on. We got a light coming off the board, so we're looking pretty good. All right, and let me, uh, I'll get this configured up in beta flight, and we will Got to get the. There we go. This uh, particular antenna wire needs to be positioned such that it doesn't get into the props. So that's what I'm doing right here. And that looks good. This will just tuck under, plug into the battery, give it a couple of twists, and we'll... Yeah. Yeah, that should be good. All right. I'll get this configured in beta flight. The uh, next steps, uh, the next thing you should see really is some uh, flight test video of this guy. Um, and I'll, I'll probably test it out tomorrow morning uh, outside. So uh, we're not flying around in the basement with open props. Um, although I have flown it, uh, a similar one down here. Um, this is just, uh, you know, just me being practical about it but flying outside is always a little nicer especially if it's nice out hopefully it won't rain but uh, yep all right well thank you for watching i appreciate it and um, if you have any questions or need any help uh feel free to reach out and i'll i'll be happy to answer any questions you might have but there it is. That's the uh, Vista Pick. And like I said, uh, you know, if you're going to build one of these, I strongly recommend these 1303s. Um, very efficient motors. I've heard people complaining about 1107s getting two, two and a half minutes on something like this. Um, 1205s are a little heavy on something like this. 1303s are, are just, they're like the right balance for it. Um, that's just my opinion. But, uh, you know, Hey, I, uh, uh, I, it's hard to argue with a six minute flight time out of something so small. Last night we finished up the Vista pick and uh, I forgot to weigh it. So I thought I'd go ahead and do that. Um, turn on the scale here. Uh, we've got, uh, this is the um, Vista pick with the um, JHE MCU uh, GHF. 411 AIO board with uh, the full-size Vista with uh, the 12 millimeter cable. If you wanted to save just a little tiny bit of weight, you could go with the 8 centimeter cable. I, I actually, for whatever reason, thought that's what I had, but um, I guess I, I just misremembered. But um, yeah, we got this buttoned up last night, and uh, now we're just doing a weigh-in. We're at 85 grams without props. Um, we got our prop. Uh, 
bolts and then our props themselves we're at 88 grams and the props should be bring this thing right in at about 91 or 92 grams um, which is pretty good uh, that's ever so slightly heavier than uh, the one I built before um, but not by more than a gram or two so uh, and I can show that oh shit of course it would go flying off Here's the previous built one, and I think, yeah, 91 grams. I think a lot of that is in these zip ties that I chose to use because, uh, honestly, these aren't very well uh, constrained here. Um, and I, the way I did the um, this particular um, elastic isn't very good either uh, because it almost always ends up holding it uh, kind of diagonal to the way you actually want it held and so um, this particular uh, battery is a 650 this is just for bench testing it's a little heavy for uh, what you'd really want to use this is like 70 grams worth of battery which is way too much uh, ideally you want to be down in the 20 or 30 gram uh, for a battery um, like a, a 3s 300 or a, a 4s 300 or uh, 3S520 is kind of the max there. Uh, 3S450 is really good, but once you start getting up into the 650s, it's just a bit too much pack for um, a quad of this size to be efficient. So, anyway, uh, that's it. I just wanted to uh, do a quick, uh, um, you know, correction, I guess, and um, uh, make sure that we had weighed everything and covered it all. So, thank you for watching and uh, please stay tuned for more content. I'm planning on getting back into it and uh, just doing, cranking out some more builds. So, thanks again.